Hello my friends. Welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. This is a place where I talk about books. I've got, I think, six books to tell you about today. Lots of readathons happening in April. I'm always excited about readathons. And hmm, before I get to the books, I've got a couple of live performances to tell you about that blew me away. A couple weeks ago, we saw Shana Jones perform her one-woman show, Black and Rural, and it was fantastic. If you have a chance, um, if you see her name, check her out. And the other was a dance performance by a Maori dance group from New Zealand, Okareka Dance. And, oh, so powerful. I am going to link in the description box below uh, uh, some clips where you can watch Okareka Dance perform some of the pieces from the show that we saw, Mana Wahine. And I will also link to Shana Jones and her Black and Rural trailer as well. Okay, so the books. I have been continuing to enjoy a suitable boy group read, a nice slow read. We're just reading part nine this week. And I've got a couple of other slow reads going on. Uh, these are just for me though. When the Light of the World Was Subdued, Our Songs Came Through. This is a collection of Native Nations poetry from the U.S. edited by Joy Harjo. And I am reading a poem a day. I had stopped for a while, but starting in April, because it is poetry month, I'm back into reading these. And in fact, I have one that I will read at the end of this video, if you want to stick around by that. It's one by uh, Deborah Miranda. And there's a readathon that uh, Kevi of Say Kevi started a couple of years ago, and it's still going on this year, Trans Girl April. I actually started a day early because March 31st is the Trans Day of Visibility, and I made a vlog about reading and listening to only trans creators on that day. That's just the video that I made right before this one. And I started reading Ivan Coyote's Care Of. These are letters that Ivan received and his responses to them. Ivan Coyote is a trans-Canadian author and I am reading these one letter a day. So making my way slowly through this and by reading it I'm participating not only in Trans Girl April but also People April. This is a readathon hosted by Roz of Scally Dandling About the Books and Elizabeth of Bouquins and Books. I will link their information down below and every other booktuber that I mention I'm going to link their information down below. And another readathon happening in April is Picture This. This is a readathon for adults to read picture books, celebrating the joy of picture books. And it is hosted by Jack over at Spread Book Joy and Shelley Swearingen. So I'm going to start off today with a lovely picture book. Dandelion's Dream. It's by Yoko Tanaka. Yoko is a Japanese artist who moved to the U.S. to study art and now she lives in London, in England. This is a wordless picture book. It's set at night and the art is done with charcoal. 
I found an interview where she talks about how she created these images. You can see that she used self-adhesive clear masking sheets to make stencils because after she did all the charcoal work, then she added this gorgeous rich yellow color digitally. And so the story is of a dandelion opening at night and transforming into a lion who goes off and has adventures. It's a joyous, a gentle celebration of how even while you're rooted in one place, you can go off and have adventures and you know places that your imagination will take you. And it is also about a plant's life cycle. So starting with the growing, blooming, and ending with uh, going to seed and the seeds spreading off uh, to start new plants. Next, I have another book by a Japanese author, Weasels in the Attic, and it's by Hiroko Oyamada, translated from Japanese by David Boyd. It's just a novella, 71 pages long. I buddy read this the lovely Natalie over at Curious Reader. Uh, this is the kind of book that is great to have a buddy to discuss with because it's the what the heck did I just read kind of story. It's divided into three parts and the narrator and his wife, both unnamed, are planning to have a child and they have uh, interactions with other couples and their babies. There's always something that seems strange, maybe sinister, maybe not, uh, but just there's this sense that something is wrong, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Uh, it's a, a surreal kind of story that leaves you with questions and it's the kind of story that uh, really uh, got me interested in reading Japanese literature. So back in the 90s when I picked up uh, Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto and uh, The Elephant Vanishes by Haruki Murakami uh, I was enraptured by something about these works of Japanese literature and uh, I don't know how to explain it except to say that there's, there's a puzzle to them that appeals to me. And Actually, the reason why I picked this up in the first place is because Seb of Apocalypse uh, Reading or Apocalyptic Reading, Apocalypse Reading, hmm, something like that. Anyway, I'm, I'll link his channel down below. He was talking about how the cover attracted him. Now this, it wasn't this cover, this is uh, published by New Directions. Uh, the cover that drew him in was this one with the weasel face on the cover. Okay, so this next book is for Poetry Month, a collection of poems by this young Scottish poet, Len Penny. It's called Poems, and it was my sister Zan who drew this one to my attention. Len Penny grew up speaking Scots at home, and she has done a lot to promote uh, Scottish vocabulary by doing a Scots word of the day. I am going to link uh, an episode that BBC Scotland did about this young poet. Her poems uh, 
she reads them herself in the Canongate audiobook edition. And I found it on Hoopla. So if your library has the uh, Hoopla database, uh, you can find it there. She's so fierce, so feminist. She's got a lot to say and she doesn't hold back. Uh, she uses strong language. She uses a lot of Scots dialect and this is fab, absolutely fabulous. And these next three books actually are all by Indigenous authors. If I forget to mention what their uh, nation or tribal affiliation is, look in the description box down below because I always include it there. So I'm starting with the Métis Canadian writer Cherie Dimaline. The book is called Into the Bright Open and it's a queer retelling of The Secret Garden. It is aimed at uh, upper elementary and teens, certainly enjoyable by any uh, reader, especially if you also read The Secret Garden when you were younger. And the audiobook is read by Brefni Caribou. Now this next book is part of my participation in People April. It's a memoir in essays called Thundersong and it's by Sasha Lapointe. Now you can see on the cover a Sasha also has her Coast Salish name which I have no idea how to pronounce. Now, throughout the, her essays she does include Coast Salish words and I'm so happy that the language is out there and being used so uh, Coast Salish people will be able to see their language on the page and it's part of the uh, revival of culture and language. Uh, Lapointe's great-grandmother was very involved in uh, preserving the language. The cover art, by the way, is by Maynard Johnny Jr., who is also Coast Salish. Lapointe grew up in the Skagit Valley where white settlers came and planted tulips and now it's a big tourist destination and it brings her sadness to see how the landscape of our peop her people was changed um, with these tulips. So what brings tourism and happiness is not received the same way by by herself and members of her family who, for example, can't get from the reserve to town because of uh, tour buses blocking the way for the two-week period that the tulips are in bloom. There are themes in this book that echo the ones in Len Penny's poems. Uh, here is a sample from La Pointe. Fear mixed with loneliness is a dangerous recipe. When I look back on it, I can't help but feel sadness for my adolescent self, for all the girls who ever felt for one second that it was their body's fault that men were being creepy. I shudder when I think of the girls who might have done what I did, who just embraced the fact that they could go missing. I think of all the systems put in place to reinforce this certainty. They serve as reminders to make sure we don't forget we are disposable. She talks about growing up with the knowledge that if you go missing, they're not going to have search parties uh, out, out looking for you uh, like they would if you were a white girl. Now in this book, there is another one of those incidents of serendipity, of, um, reading multiple books at a time where similar things come up. Uh, and in this case, it's abortion. The author writes about her experience. And uh, I'm going to tell you about an audiobook um, 
later on in this video where one of the central characters is a doctor in a woman's clinic where she performs abortions. But there is also two other books that I'm not finished reading that talk about the experience of abortion. Uh, both of these are novels. Uh, Daughter by Claudia Day and Lost on Me by Veronica Raimo. More about those last two in my next video. Another book with an Indigenous author is this one, Fleece and Fiber, and it's by Francine McCabe, who is of mixed ancestry, settler and Anishinaabe. She lives here on Vancouver Island. It's a coffee table book, and the subtitle pretty much tells you what it is. It's Textile Producers of Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. Francine McCabe has gone to visit a whole bunch of farms who are raising animals for fiber. These include sheep wool, llama, alpaca, mohair, cashmere, and also some cellulose fibers, linen and hemp and even a little bit at the end about uh, using invasive plant fiber. I'm pretty excited about those possibilities. So it's mostly directed at crafters. Uh, the author herself is a spinner and a weaver, and the information that she has in here is often breed specific, what you'd be looking for depending on what you want to create uh, and it's about the concept also of a fiber shed and having a circular economy going from soil all the way through to clothing that you can wear it's it's beautiful and the last book that i've got to tell you about is another audiobook erasure by percival Everett. It's not a new book. This one came out in 2001. Uh, he's really having a moment. The only other book that I've read so far by Everett is uh, The Trees. And like The Trees, this one is funny and heartrending at the same time. It's about an author who it gets so frustrated when a, a schlocky book about black ghetto life gets so much attention and praise that he decides to write one as a spoof and it becomes uh, a big hit. So a satire that is also kind of devastating the other things going on in his life is uh, his relationships with his adult siblings and their mother who has developed Alzheimer's. So dealing with a lot of things as well as uh, money problems. I highly recommend it. The audiobook is a new production that just came out last year, I think, with Sean Crisden as the narrator and it is excellent. I loved it. So those are all the books that I've got to tell you about and I'm going to leave you with a poem. I Am Not a Witness by Deborah Miranda. She is a queer writer from the Ohlone, Costanoan, Eslin and Chumash peoples. And this is from this collection. I'm not a witness. I found coyote, eagle, and momoi in a book, but cannot read the Chumash words. I found photographs of bedrock slabs pocked by hundreds of acorn grinding holes, but the holes are empty. The stone pestles that would curve to my grip lie dead behind museum glass. Mountains and rivers and oaks rise in Spanish accents, 
San Gabriel, Santa Ines, Robles. These are not real names. Some of our bones rest in 4,000 graves out back behind the mission. Some of our bones are mixed into mud to strengthen cool, thick walls where smallpox and measles came and stayed. Some of our bones washed down the river, whose name I do not know, past islands I cannot name, to the sea where I have never sailed. Mixed blood, I lay claim by the arch of my eyebrows, short nose, dark hands. I am not a witness. I am left behind, child of children who were locked in the mission and raped. I did not see this. I was not there, but I am here. Where is the place that knows me? Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for watching. I love to hear from you, so please leave me a comment down below and happy reading to all of you. See you again soon. Bye for now.